You're looking at raw data, identifying malicious behavior, and connecting artifacts to action. It's technical, but it's also one of the most valuable skill sets you can have in a SOC or an analyst role. Hi there, I'm Kyle Winters, Technical Advocate at Cisco, and welcome back to the CCNA Cybersecurity video series. In the next domain, Network Intrusion Analysis, We'll focus on examining network traffic to identify patterns, analyze packet captures, and detect signs of potential intrusions in motion. It's a critical area for both the exam and for day-to-day -day work in security operations. Network intrusion analysis makes up 20% of the CCNA cybersecurity exam, and it's one of the more technical sections. So if you're somebody who enjoys getting into protocol headers and dissecting network flows, this is probably going to be one of your favorites. Let's start with mapping events to source technologies. The idea here is to be able to look at an event like a login failure, a malware alert, or a suspicious traffic spike, and know which system it likely came from. The exam might give you log snippets and ask whether they came from an IDS, a firewall, a proxy, or something like NetFlow or antivirus software. So it helps to know what kind of data each of those tools generates. An IDS might log a signature match. A firewall might show blocked connections or dropped packets. NetFlow shows traffic volumes and session metadata. It's about pattern recognition. Next, we have to talk about false positives and false negatives. These are important to understanding not just for the exam, but for real life alert tuning. A false positive is when you flag something as an attack that isn't, and the inverse, a false negative, is when an actual attack goes unnoticed. Then you have true positives and true negatives, which are correct calls and benign events, which might look weird, but are actually harmless. You'll want to be able to compare these terms and apply them to alert scenarios. For example, if your IDS triggers on a regular software update, that's a false positive. If it misses a port scan, that's a false negative. Now, Let's dig into how traffic is inspected. You'll need to compare deep packet inspection, packet filtering, and stateful firewall operations. Packet filtering checks headers and makes simple allow or deny decisions. Stateful firewalls track session states and remember connections. Deep packet inspection goes even further. It looks at the actual payload of packets to identify application level content. These differences matter because each method gives you a different level of insight and control. You'll also see questions comparing inline traffic interrogation versus taps and passive monitoring. Inline tools can block traffic. They sit directly in the path and actively make decisions. Taps and span ports are passive. They collect copies of traffic and analyze them after the fact. Knowing when and why to use one or the other is something that comes up in both the blueprint and real world deployments. Another key comparison is between transactional data like NetFlow and full packet captures. NetFlow gives you session metadata, it's lightweight and it's fast. PCAP files on the other hand, contain the full packet data and can show exactly what was said during a connection. Forensics and deep analysis usually requires PCAPs but initial detection often comes from tools like NetFlow. And yes, there will almost certainly be PCAP related questions on the exam. You might be asked to identify suspicious packet fields such as source or destination IP addresses, ports, protocols, or even payloads. Expect to see things like TCP headers, HTTP methods, DNS queries, or ARP requests. If you've used Wireshark, this is where that experience will really pay off. If you haven't, now's a great time to download it and start poking around. One skill that's especially useful, knowing how to extract files or artifacts from a TCP stream. The exam won't make you do it manually, but it might show you a Wireshark output and ask what file type was transferred or what the source address was. You'll also need to recognize common artifacts and alerts, things like IP addresses, port numbers, file hashes, registry changes, API calls, or URLs. Being able to connect these elements into bigger picture is the difference between just reading data and understanding an attack. And finally, don't overlook the section on protocol header fields. You'll need to be familiar with IPv4 and IPv6, TCP and UDP, DNS, HTTP, ICMP, and even application protocols like SMTP and POP3. The exam might present 
a packet and ask you to identify the header, the method, or whether traffic is encrypted or not. It's a great idea to review example headers and understand what each field means, from source ports to flags and time to live. There's also one last topic in this domain, basic regular expressions. These are used to search through logs or trigger alerts based on patterns. You won't have to write complex regex, but you should understand how they work. Things like wildcards, character classes, and anchors. It's another one of those tools that's everywhere in security and a little familiarity goes a long way. To wrap it up, domain four is where you become fluent in traffic. You're looking at raw data, identifying malicious behavior, and connecting artifacts to action. It's technical, but it's also one of the most valuable skill sets you can have in a SOC or an analyst role. In the next video, we'll head into our final domain, security policies and procedures. That's where we look at frameworks, response plans, compliance models, and the human side of cybersecurity operations. Thanks for sticking with me, and I will see you in the next one.